We started a couple of Sundays ago talking about <clears throat> we actually began talking about pressing. Amen? Pressing against the pressure. And we talked about the pressures of life and all of the things that seems to crowd our mind. Amen? Amen. And seems to put pressure on us and to try and we talked about the devices of the enemy or the bill and how that he tries to push back to press back, to stop you from making it. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So we talked about that. And then last week we talked, we took a little bit farther with a sermon entitled, There's a Thief in the House. And we talked about how the enemy has come, our adversary has come to steal, kill, and to destroy. And we talked about a lot of the things that he uses. We read in John the 10th chapter, the first ten verses, we concluded that with the Scripture that says, The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Are you glad for that today? My, 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 that there is life to be found and not only to be found, but you know in whom it is found this morning. Amen? It's one thing to know whether there's peace out there somewhere, but it's another thing to know where that peace is at. Amen. And where you get it from. Amen. And that is Jesus. Hallelujah. And I ask you the question, I ask you what has the enemy came to steal? And we said he's came to steal your peace, your joy, your time, your money. Amen. I said your tithe. I got some feedback from that this week, by the way. <laughs> Amen. He, see, if He can steal your time, Amen, He's gained a big victory in your life. Time that you could have spent in the Word. Time that you could have spent in prayer, Brother Bill. Time that you could have spent with the Lord. I ain't talking about Him stealing your time where you could have spent watching a ball game. Amen. I'm not talking about him stealing your time you could have spent watching your daily souls. I'm talking about Him stealing your time. As a matter of fact, that's some of the things He uses. To steal our time, that did that. Amen. Amen. How many times have you went all? I mean, you had you had every intentions. I'm gonna spend some time in prayer today, and when the day was over, you were like, "Wow, where did the time go?" The enemy stole it, Amen. Different ways, different things, different avenues, but he stole it. He wants to steal your time. He wants to steal your time. He wants to steal your money. He is a thief. He is a killer. Jesus said he was the murderer from the beginning. That means he's all he's been a murderer, Amen. From the beginning. He's also a destroyer. Amen? amen. He wants to destroy your family. Amen. Can I get some amens from that this morning? Amen. Surely we can understand this morning. He wants to destroy oh, yeah. your family. Amen? He wants to destroy your marriage. Amen. Why do you think that the divorce rate in the church is as high as it is in the world? Somebody said it's 50-50 right now. Amen? 50% chance you make it. 50% chance you won't. Somehow I think it Maybe getting a little more that you want than it is that you will. But anyway, He wants to destroy your marriage. Amen? He wants to destroy your home. He wants to destroy your witness. He wants, to, he wants you to believe that, well, it's my life. I can live any way I want to live. I can do anything I want to do. That's exactly what He wants you to think. Amen? Amen? You ever heard teenagers? They'll say, I can do what I want to do. Yeah. I'm 18. I'm my boss now. That's where a lot of Christians act. I'm free. I can do whatever I want to do. Yeah, stupid, but somebody's watching you. Yes. Amen? Somebody's got their eye on you, Brother Sleece. Somebody that you've been telling about this Jesus thing you got. Amen? Somebody you've been telling about this great word you've been hearing in this church you go to and the relationship you have with God. Somebody's wanting to see if that's real or if that's just all talk. Amen? Amen? Amen. He wants to take away your effectiveness in the world. And I got news for you. You cannot be very effective to the world if you're just like the world. Amen? Amen. Oh, I ain't going to preach that this morning. I'll let Brother Bill preach that sometime later. But Ted will preach. Amen? Amen? He wants to take away your effectiveness. He wants to take away your witness. He wants to snuff out your light. Amen? You see, here you are. You're supposed to be a light in a world of darkness. And the more light he can put out, the darker it gets. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. The more lights he can put out, the darker it gets. So he wants to put out your light. He wants to steal, kill, destroy. He's a destroyer. Yes, he That's exactly what he leaves in his aftermath. Destruction. Amen. And many times we don't know what hit until it's over because we haven't been taught the way that he works. Amen. We don't understand it. We spend all of our time pointing our fingers at everybody else claiming it's their fault when if we'd look just beyond that we would realize the force behind it was not that person. Amen. Amen. The strife that was caused, the hurt, the anger, the, the, the hate that was caused was caused by your adversary. And your adversary is not your husband. Your adversary is not your mother or your father. Your adversary is not your sister or your brother. Your adversary is not the pastor. Your adversary is the devil. Amen. And I know we don't like to talk about him. People don't like to preach about him. You don't hear much preaching about him. Like I told you last Sunday, the, about the only time you ever hear or see anything about the devil is if he's on a greeting card or a can of ham. Amen. Come on. But he is still real. He wants you to believe he some has been. He wants you to believe that he does not exist. He don't want you to hear about the way that he works because if he can get us ignorant of his devices, he can get a foothold. He has an advantage. Paul said, lest, he have, lest our adversary has an advantage of us, we are not ignorant concerning his devices. Amen? Meaning that if we're ignorant concerning the things and the way that he works, he will have an advantage over us. Anyone that knows anything about battle or any kind of war or any kind of enemy or adversary knows that if you are ignorant of their weapons, if you are ignorant of their devices, if you are ignorant of their scheme and their plot, they have an advantage over you. Amen? That's what He wants. He wants us to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to watch. That's what we talked about last week. We talked about watching because Jesus said that if the good man knew the eye of the bill that the thief came, he would have been watching and he would have not have suffered his house to be broken up. Amen? Many times, if we'd have just been awake and watching, if we'd have just been awake to the devices, aware of the devices of the enemy, we would have noticed, hey, I realize the source of this. I realize this is the enemy. I realize this is my adversary. I know how he works. The Bible teaches us how he works. Amen. The Bible teaches us how he works. We would have recognized it and we would have stopped it before it ever got started. But we didn't. We la la and gag agged ourselves right through. We live in a candy land. Most of the church world, I told you, lives in a marshmallow candy land to where they're all blue skies and no clouds and everything's fine. And you got a lollipop and I got a lollipop and we're all suckers. Amen. Hallelujah. But anyway, we got to realize today that there is an enemy. There's an adversary. And we have to realize the way that he works and the way that he tries to come into our lives. Amen. Yeah. And many times we leave the door open. And we allow Him to come in because we're asleep at the wheel. We have left the door open. We have allowed Him to come into our homes. Amen. Amen. We have allowed Him to come into our schools. We have allowed Him to come into our government. Amen. 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 We went to sleep, church. We've allowed Him to come into our churches. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, He rules most churches. Amen. Amen. You think He don't go there? He's on the board. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 He's a thief. He's a, he's a killer. He's a murderer. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants you to believe he's some cartoon character. And I'm not telling you, like I said last week, I'm not telling you to be scared of him. I'm telling you to be aware of him. I'm telling you to be knowledgeable of the way that he works. Amen? Amen. That only makes good sense. That if you have an adversary, and you do, the Bible says we do, you should know the way that he works. He's got, a, he's got his eyes on your peace and your joy because he can't have those things. Amen? And he's like a spoiled brat or some Christians I know. Amen? Amen. If I can't have it, I don't want them to have it either. Amen. Amen? Brother Slee said last week people get jealous. Amen? They do. God blesses you. They get jealous about it. Amen? He is that way. Amen. He knows he missed it, Brother Bill. He don't want you to make it. He don't want you to have what he can't have. How many times have you heard somebody say, well, if I can't have it, they ain't going to have it either. Amen? I would rather take it and throw it off a cliff than let them have it. Amen? That's the way he is. 
He wants to steal it. He don't want you to have it because he can't have it. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants to make sure you don't have the joy that you're supposed to have. Amen. Mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong. I'm not telling you to be afraid of him. I'm telling you to be aware of him. That he can only spoil your house when you fail to watch. He can only break up your house whenever you fail to recognize him for who he is. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11 says, Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant concerning his, we are not ignorant of his devices, meaning his weaponry, the things that he uses. We talked about some of the things that he uses. He uses unforgiveness, he uses bitterness, he uses strife, he uses deceit, he uses gossip. Just to name a few, amen. I want us to look this morning at where the bullseye is really at. Many times, if you've seen old war movies or if you've known anything, if maybe you've heard some of the things that our Pentagon have done, you know, after the war's over, they tell you how they won the victory. They said, well, we found out there was a focal point. Maybe it was an ammunition center. Maybe it was a place where they were getting all their supplies from. And they hit that place. They said, this is our bullseye. This is the target right here. If we can hit this, we will make them vulnerable in all other spots. Satan has a, has a spot like that marked today. He has had this spot marked since the beginning of time, Brother Bill. And we find that, go with me, if you will, this morning to Genesis, the third chapter, in the first verse. And we're going to see where his bullseye has been since the beginning of time. We're going to see that out of his own mouth, the very first words that the Word of God report him, the very first words that the Word of God records him as speaking is an attack against the very thing. If he can get this for the bill, if he can attack this spot, he can get the place where you get your, your weaponry from. He can get the place where you get your joy from. He can get the place where you get your peace from. He's got a bullseye on this spot right here. Listen what happens. The Bible says the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath, listen to me, this is the very first words the Bible records as coming out of his mouth. Yea, in his dealings with man, Yea, hath God said, uh oh. You see, from the beginning, his bullseye has been on God's word. Yeah. He knows, for the bill, in his battle against you, in his strategy, Brother Sleece, that he has laid out against you, there is a place, there is an ammunition house, there is a supply house that he has a bullseye on, and he knows if he can hit you there. It will make you weak everywhere else. And it's the Word of God. Amen. It has, oh my goodness, it has been from the beginning of time. It is the same today. Listen what happens here. Yea, hath God said. He begins His attack on mankind with attacking the Word of God. Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. See, He questions God's Word. That's what he does. He questions it. And if he can begin to question that, he knows that our twisted mind will do the rest. You see, why have we got so many versions out there on the market today? Because somebody, and I'll tell you who it was, Westcott and Hort, that's where the, that's where the idolatry and the harlotry began as far as changing the Word of God goes. And, and what we can trace it back to man, of course we know Satan's been doing this forever, but... West Cotton Hort said, well, let's, let's question God's Word. So they begin, to, they begin to question it. They begin to say, maybe it doesn't mean what it says, or maybe they didn't use the right manuscripts. And see, Satan, he knows if he can start it, man will continue his work. Can I say that again? If he can get the ball rolling, man won't stop it. Man will add to fuel to the flame. These are the first words recorded that the adversary said. He questions God's word. Then watch the woman. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now if you go over there and read in chapter 2, the Bible says that God told them these words. You may eat freely 
of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yet whenever she converses with the enemy, the adversary, she says, we may eat, see she removed the word freely, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit which is in the midst of the, tr of the, of the garden, God has said, now listen to what she does, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. God never said you can't touch it. Go over there and read what God told him. He said, don't eat of it. If you eat of it, you're going to die. Right. She says that God said not to eat it. So see, we see something being added to God's Word. Mm -hmm. Neither shall you touch it. First it begins questioning God's Word. Then the woman adds to God's Word. Mm -hmm. Then what she said? Lest ye die. Do you know what that means? That means per adventure. That ain't what God said. That means maybe. That ain't what God said. God said you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. That ain't what the woman uses. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? So first it's questioned. Then it's, then it's added to. Then it's watered down. My goodness, does that sound like anything that you anything that, that you that, that, that you can relate to today that has happened to the Word of God? It's questioned. It's changed. It's added to. It's watered down. Lest you die. Peradventure, maybe, perhaps, no, you're fixing to die if you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat of. Didn't say nothing about not touching it. She adds that in herself. So see, this is an attack that has been happening from the beginning of man. Now watch what the devil does. <coughs> Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. What's he doing? He's attacking the Word of God. God said you shall surely die. At least the devil was listening close enough he got the quote right. Yeah, he, did. he said you shall not surely die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. God said you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. Amen. Not lest you die. So he comes against the Word of God. The very first attack that he uses against man, he comes against the Word of God. Amen. He said, you shall not surely die. For God doth know, and you know what he said, that in the day that you eat thereof, when your eye, that your eyes will be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. My goodness, there's Creflo right there in the Garden of Eden. Amen. <laughs> you shall be as gods. Amen. Yeah. Knowing good and evil. Now what does God do? <laughs> he curses the serpent. He speaks to the enemy and tells him that the woman's seed, that the enemy will bruise his heel, but his heel will bruise his head. What does God use to destroy the kingdom of darkness? The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. What did Jesus use in the wilderness whenever the enemy came and questioned the Word of God? Whenever the first time that the Bible mentions any interaction between the devil and Jesus is whenever Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days to fast and to pray. And the devil comes to him and what's he do? Read it for yourself. Every one of the things that he said to Jesus was an attack against the Word of God. And every time Jesus would say, it is written, he would use the Word of God against him instead of questioning it, which is what man does. When he comes against us, you know, he says, you ain't going to make it. We think, well, maybe I ain't going to make it. Instead of knowing that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, amen, and using the Word because, see, he wants to attack us there. If he can hit you where the Word's at, brother, he can take your peace because that's where you find your peace. If he can hit you where the Word's at, that's where he's going to get you joy because you can find joy in the Word of God. If he can hit you where the Word's at, he can take away your salvation because it's the Scriptures that testify of our salvation, amen, and shows us the way that truth and the life. It was the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And made a way where there was no way. So if He can hit your Word, He's got you. Mm -hmm. He can weaken you by hitting your Word. Mm -hmm. He's got a bullseye on the Word of God. Amen. Every one of the things that He speaks to Jesus in Matthew 4, 1-11 through 11, are attacks against the Word of God. Go with me to Mark, the fourth chapter. Mark, the fourth chapter. As Brother Tyler says when you have it, say amen. Mark, the fourth chapter. I want you to look at this. We're going to look at the sower and the seed. The parable of the sower. Mark, the fourth chapter. Amen. 
and the second verse is where we're going to start. And he taught them many things by parables and said unto them in his doctrine, Hearken before, behold, I'm sorry, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it did yield, the Bible says, it, it had fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some thirty and some sixty and some an hundredfold. Now the disciples would come to him and he would explain this parable to them. Drop down to verse 14. He's going to explain to him, to them what he just said. See, the Word of God is self-explanatory. Amen? Amen? The 14th verse, Jesus says this, The sower soweth the Word. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? The seed that He was telling the disciples about the sower going forth to sow in all these different places that it fell in, and all the different ground that it landed on and the different things that happened to it, Jesus said, that's the Word yes. of God. Amen? And He said, these are they by the wayside where the Word is sown, but when they have heard it... Are you with me? Yes, amen. Verse number 15, are you looking at it? Amen. What happens to it? Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the Word that was sown in their hearts. What did I tell you last Sunday? He'll show up Sunday night or maybe quicker than that. Maybe he won't wait till you leave the church house and try to steal the word that you got Sunday morning. Yeah. Amen? amen? If you got any seed sown and he knows the difference between wheat and tares, amen? Yeah. He's a tare sower. He knows the difference between wheat and tares. And he knows it. See, we got a lot of preachers sowing tares this morning. We got a lot of preachers sowing corrupted seed this morning. And the devil don't bother with any of that. Oh, but that seed that he's after, the pure seed of the Word of God, that's what he comes to catch away. That's what he comes to take. And when this seed was planted, the Bible says that immediately, it says, These are they by the wayside where the Word is sown. But when they had heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. There's a thief that comes. If you want to write down this morning's message, it's called the thief cometh. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And how does he do that? By taking your seed. You can't have no fruit if you don't first have seed. Amen. Amen. You see, this seed that fell by the wayside and that Satan came and immediately took it away, they never had any fruit. The seed never took root. The seed never grew. He goes on to say in verse 16, And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, so they endure, but for a time, the Bible says, and afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Do you hear that? What we talked about two weeks ago, we talked about the pressures of life. Afflictions, persecutions, trials, and turmoils. Immediately when the pressure sets in, and who applies the pressure? When you get down to it, when you, when you scrape through the postmaster and your neighbor and your brother and your sister to really see who's behind this thing, it's the adversary, the devil. So we see his hand in every one of these, destroying the seed, stealing the seed, killing the seed. It goes on to say in verse 18, these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. That's exactly what's happened to a lot of people today. Yeah. The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entered in, and when those things entered in, 
They choked out the word that was there. And it kept the seed from bringing forth any fruit. Oh, but listen to this. Thank God for the good ground. Amen. Verse 20 says, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirty, some sixty, and some hundred. Hallelujah. Some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some hundred. All of these had things in common. All of these people that is talking about heard the word. All of these different types of situations and people, all of these, the word, the seed was planted, but there was, seed, there was times the seed was stolen, it was killed, it was destroyed, it was choked out. All of these attacks of the enemy to get rid of the seed that he knows brings forth fruit. He don't want you to be fruitful. Amen. He don't want you to grow. Nothing would please him more, Brother Bill, than to you to sit in some cold, dead, and dried up church and just sit there and never grow. Amen. Sit there and never move. But the minute you begin to grow, you begin to get his attention. You're like, huh, going to try to do something to get rid of that word that's causing me because he knows that's where the fruit comes from. If you bear any fruit, amen, if you bear any fruit, it's going to be because of the seed of the word of God. Because of the seed of the Word of God that has been planted in good ground and has brought forth fruit. Thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. Now you can take this for what it's worth, but I look this up into Greek. There were only two times in this parable that the Bible says that Jesus talked about them receiving the Word. The ones on stony ground, it says they received it with gladness. But it says they couldn't endure. After, afterward, when affliction came and persecution arose from the world, immediately they lost it. Amen? That word received there is not the same word that is used a little later on in this chapter. That word receive in the Greek is actually a Greek word called lambano. It means to take and get a hold of. These people got a hold of it. Amen? Amen? But the enemy came and took it away through the cares and the pressures of life, through the afflictions. Amen. The other time it uses the word receive is those that brought forth fruit. And I want to tell you this morning what that word means in the Greek. Completely different. Completely different word and I can't pronounce it. Paradigmoia. How about that? Okay. It means to accept. It means to hold near. Oh, yes. Amen. See, there's a difference. Ask a football coach. Yeah. He'll tell you the difference between just holding the football when you're running or holding it near. Yeah. Can you get that this morning? Amen. Two different Greek words. Same chapter. Talking about the same thing, but two different meanings. Mm -hmm. One means just to hold on to. The other means to hold near. So you don't lose it. So can't nobody take it. That's why they tell them boys, when you got the ball and you're running with it, Hold it like this right here. Amen? Amen? So can't nobody get a hold of it. Yes. So they can't steal it, Brother Bill. So they can't take it away. So you won't fumble it. These people that lost it because of the afflictions, it didn't take much to knock it out of their hand because they just hold it. That's good right there. Amen. <clears throat> Come on. But when you get a hold of it, Come on. and you hold on to it, and you draw it near Amen. to you. Amen? A little harder for you to lose it. Yes, it is. Amen. See, if you don't get seed covered up good, yeah. you may not get no fruit. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. This seed that fell in good ground, it began to spring up. This that was received and not just received and not just grabbed a hold of but held close, it began to bring forth fruit in the lives of these people. Yeah. 30, 60, 100 fold. Now all of them didn't bring forth the same amount of fruit. They brought forth the same quality of fruit. It wasn't the same quantity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Same quality. Not the same quantity. But they all brought forth fruit. And so will you. When you begin to have the Word of God planted, the seed planted into the good ground of your heart. Amen? It wouldn't hurt us to prepare the ground before the seed is planted. Amen? Mm -hmm. The Bible says to... To, and this is not a direct quote, it's something like break up the fallow ground of your heart. Amen? In order to plant these fields that you see out beside the road when you travel along the highways, 
First, the farmers went out there and tilled up the ground first. Amen? Yeah. It wouldn't hurt some of us today to spend some time praying and say, God, prepare my heart to receive your word. Prepare my heart, the fallow ground of my heart. Break it up, God, so that the seed of the word can be planted in my heart and not just planted for the enemy to come along and steal, but not just planted, but covered up and watered and took care of and held close so that the seed can begin to be bring forth fruit in my life. His goal, his bullseye is on God's Word. Why do you think, and we, we get a lot of flack for this, there's a reason today that we are King James only. It's not because we're some dogmatic, narrow-minded, goofy bunch of Pentecostals that are not enlightened or don't know any better. It's because this is the closest thing we have to the original seed. It's the closest thing that we have to the original manuscripts. There's a reason that we have so many different versions. I told you this earlier on the market. Because Satan has been attempting to change the words of God since the beginning of time. He knows if he can get you seed, you won't bear no fruit. Amen. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to take your peace, your joy. Listen, what's the Bible say the fruit of the Spirit is? Somebody name them all for me. I won't even have to turn over there. Amen. Love, peace. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Did you hear that? Faith. See, if He can get your word, He can get your faith. Oh, Brother Billy, that ain't true. My faith comes from God. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's how your faith grows. The Word. If He can get your word, oh, listen, He's got a big red circle and a big X there on the, 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 the place where you get your joy and your faith and your long suffering and your peace. He's got a bullseye on the ammunition house you got today and it's the Word of God and we can just realize today how important it is. How important the Word of God is. He wants your faith. And where does your fruit come from? The seed of the Word of God that is sown that Jesus talked about, Brother Bill, brought forth fruit. What kind of fruit was it? It was the only kind of fruit that the Bible speaks of in a Christian's life. The fruit of the Spirit. Amen? Or the fruit that it speaks of in Galatians, the 5th chapter and the 22nd verse anyway. The fruit of the Spirit. The seed of the Word that was sown brought forth fruit. No, 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 Brother Bill. Some people will say, my fruit comes from faith. Yes, but I'm going to take you back to Romans 10 and 17. Where does faith come from? The Bible says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. No, 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 my fruit comes from Jesus. I couldn't agree with you more. He looked at the Pharisees and said, search the Scriptures wherein you think you have eternal life. It is the Scriptures that testify of me. Amen. He was the Word that became flesh and stepped on the devil's hands. And, uh, he made a show of him openly on the old rugged cross uh, when the word became flesh uh, and put on the robe of an earthly man and the very thing he questioned and destroyed man with in the garden came back to haunt him hallelujah on Calvary's cross uh, when the word spoke father forgive them they know not what they do and it is finished his word accomplished what it started amen amen and Satan has had a bullseye on it his whole his whole time. Amen. Even whenever he said, I will ascend above the Most High and I will be like God, it was an affront to God's Word. His bullseye has always been on the Word of God. That's why it's important today. That's why it's important today to know that the seed that was planted was the Word of God. And it's that that brought forth Fruit. John 1 and 14 says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory. Oh my goodness. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Amen. So let's look this morning. He wants to steal. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy you. And what better way to stop the fruit than to get rid of the seed? Did you hear that this morning? What better way to keep Christians fruitless this morning? 
than to steal the real seed and replace it with a counterfeit that can only bring forth tares. Amen. Amen. My goodness. My, my, my. First Peter, I'm closing with this this morning. You don't have to go there if you don't want to. We've had, we already read this. Humble yourselves therefore before the mighty hand of God that you may be exalted in due time, casting all your care upon Him for He careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. See, that's what's wrong with a lot of the church that are drunk. Yeah. Not so much on alcohol, which a lot of them are. I can't even understand that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Brother David Wilkerson wrote a book a while back, years and years and years ago, called Sipping Saints. Talking about alcohol drinking Christians. Got him in trouble with some of the folks down in TBN. Amen. Can't, can't eat from the table of the devil and the table of the Lord. Amen. Oh my goodness. Ain't got a bunch of sippers in here this morning. Get me amens. Wow. <clears throat> Casting all your care upon him, he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. We talked about that last week. Do you remember how we closed out last week? Steadfast, meaning to resist. How? By standing in the faith. In faith in what? The Word of God. That's what we said last week. That's what we're saying this week. His attack, his main focal point of destruction is to destroy the Word in your life. If he can do that, he can get a foothold on the rest of your life. He can deceive you and cause you to be as lost as the ball in high weeds once you begin to question the Word of God. Now listen, you have a right to question the words of man. But if you find yourself questioning the Word of God, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. The thief cometh. He cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to start with your Word. Because if he can get the Word... He can get your peace. He can get your joy. He can get your all the other things, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the meekness, your faith. If He can attack the Word, He can get a foothold on you. Hallelujah. Let's guard the Word. Amen? Let's be some guards and some watchmen. Amen? Amen. Let's be awake. Realize there is an adversary. Don't spend your time arguing with Him. Just stand in the Word. Stand in the faith of God's Word. Amen. He can't argue with that. The only way He can get anything done is if you decide to discuss something with Him. There ain't no discussion. Jesus didn't say, well, let's talk about this devil. He just said, it is written and gave Him. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. He knew what the enemy was up to then. The seed is still alive. Amen. He knows what he's up to now. Amen. Amen. Guard the Word. Keep a lookout for the enemy. Amen. I don't sit around all day. Oh no. The devil's God. Amen. Let him be scared of you. Yeah. When he sticks his head out around the corner, do like Brother Tyler says, I just smile and I go on by. Seems the devil never wins. Amen. Just walk on by. you got better things to do, Brother Bill, than to powwow with the devil. Amen. You see them old westerns, how they sit around and smoke the peace pipe with the chief? Don't do that with the devil. Amen. Just keep on going. You ain't got a fellowship with him or associate with him or discuss anything with him. If he sticks his ugly head up, just say, it is written, read the word and off and just go on down the road. Amen. Stand steadfast. In the faith. Resist the devil and he will flee. He will run away from you. Time you quit running, put him on the run. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Watch him flee. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Somebody else have something this morning before we go?